Hello, my name is Smith Asher. Um, I'm from Monta Vista High School, and my English teacher is Mr. Bashirs. Um, I'd like to give him a big thank you for helping me get into this contest, and also I'd like to thank my parents for supporting me. Um, so my story is rather long, so I chose an excerpt for you. Uh, to give you a little context, um, the main character is a man who in the morning nearly dies um, in an elevator that fails. However, he's saved at the last minute by a woman um, who is the narrator. She spills her coffee on him long enough to distract him from getting into the elevator. Uh, and then as the day unfolds, uh, strange things start to happen. His boss forgets that he was due for a promotion. He misses uh, a bus because the driver didn't see him. Um, and finally, when he wakes up the next morning, he realizes that his wife has forgotten who he is and his daughter has disappeared. He raised a hand to knock on the door, plead with her, explain their past, prove who he was. But he remembered the terror on her face, Adriana's empty room, the wall where their wedding pictures used to hang, and he let his hand drop. What was happening to him? What was going on? He reached into his pocket to find his phone, but when he pulled it out, something fluttered out and tumbled to the ground. Curious, he bent down and picked it up. It was a business card, crisp and white, and printed on the front in bold black letters was 19 hours of Starfall. Perplexed, he flipped the card over. On the back was printed two words, look up. That was my cue. I set myself aloft, pulling together my physical form. I tumbled from the sky, every fiber of my mind alight with fire. They all fell like this, the ones who came before me, and the ones before that. The anticipation rang through my body like a bell. The end was near, I could taste it on the tip of my tongue. I hit the ground and a puff of stardust stretched out my body. There was a coffee shop on the corner of the street, a quaint business with glass windows and wrought iron chairs. I sat down up front. He would be here soon. When he skidded around the corner and spotted me, I saw the recognition dawn on his face. I brushed off my shoulder as he approached. Silver dust spiraled to the ground around me. He threw the business card down on the table. What's going on? His voice shook. I looked up at him, gaze piercing. Sit down, Mark, I said. I'm not sitting down until you tell me what's going on. I didn't flinch. Sit down, I told him coldly, gesturing to the open seat without breaking eye contact. He hesitated. I could see him evaluating his options. I was the only one with the answers, and he knew it. He sat. Good. I returned to brushing dust off my blouse. Tell me what's going on. Why did everyone forget me? Why did my wife no longer remember who I am? The words tumbled out. And where's my daughter? His voice cracked on the last question. I winced. I'm sorry about your daughter. I didn't mean for that to happen. What did you do? He demanded, slamming a fist down on the wrought iron table. I sighed. I'm sorry, but your daughter is gone. She's been erased. You have been too. Silence. Sound of the city. The shuffling feet of pedestrians, the hum of the car engines, swelled and ebbed in the background. That morning, I continued, turning away from him. I saved you. I stopped you from dying in that elevator. I changed time. The universe is a touchy thing, and so when an anomaly like me interacts with a set course like yours, it compensates. You were erased. The promotion, the bus, you've been taken out of the timeline. The words were cold and heavy on my tongue. I remembered when I had first heard them, all those years ago. I knew what I was about to put him through. I turned back and looked him straight in the eye. You've been erased. Everything you were, everything you are, and everything you would have been, gone, scrubbed from. He stared at me, waiting for me to continue, waiting for me to tell him the good news. I saw the confusion, the furrow in his brow. Your daughter was never born because you were never born. I shrugged. I didn't realize that would happen, and I'm sorry. I spent a long time looking, and, well, I got sloppy. By the time I realized my mistake, events were already unfolding. It was too late to choose someone else. You chose me? Why? Why me? Why are you doing this? He demanded. Because someone else chose me. More silence. Look, Mark, I don't know why things are like this. Why I was chosen, why we have to do what we do. All I know is that once I choose someone, I go free. Eternity is lonely, and I've served my time. You choose another state, Mark. When they take the post, then you can leave. I picked up the business card and flipped it over in my, in my hands. The card struck edge cut into my fingertips, my constant companion for the last decade. It would be strange to let it go. I held the card up to him. Choose wisely. No, he replied, voice strangled. No, I don't believe this. This has to be some sick joke. Who are you? What game are you trying to... That man over there in the blue shirt? I pointed. He's going to die from cardiac arrest in 30 years. That woman? Car accident on the freeway. 
tires blow out. The one in gray will die from old age. That one, cancer. This isn't some game. I choose someone, one person. Save them. I chose you. He fell silent, ran a hand through his hair. All at once, he seemed to age as the anger dropped from his face. What's the point of it all? You save someone's life only to erase them from this world, remove everything they touched, everything they ever did. I saved your life. I didn't want to be saved. Would you have said the same thing if I asked you that this morning? He opened his mouth, but couldn't answer. I raised an eyebrow, challenging. You didn't die. Consider it a second chance. A chance to do something important before you leave. But whoever I save just does the same thing, and the person they save and the person after that, he said quietly, there's no point to this. I laughed. And what was the point of your life? I set the business card down on the table. I didn't write the rules, Mark. I didn't do. Choose wisely. You have the rest of your existence to think about it. And with that, I stood up, brushing the last fleck of dust from my skirt, and I walked away. I felt the connection break. I felt the temporal awareness slide away. I no longer felt the intimate pressure of the knowledge of every future of every person around me. I no longer had the power to step into their minds. I closed my eyes, sighed in relief. I was finally done, finally free. A tingle started from the tips of my fingers, enveloped me in warmth. I sighed and let it carry me away, leaving him behind until the next hour. Thank you.